In this tutorial, we'll cover how to test WebSockets with Burp Suite and all of the different functions that support that. WebSockets are long-lived connections that support asynchronous communications in both directions. Burp Suite has a rich set of tools to support testing of WebSockets for security issues. To see how this works, I'm going to use Burp's embedded browser to visit one of the Web Security Academy labs that covers WebSockets. So this lab has now opened a WebSocket connection. And if we look in Burp's proxy history, we can see a WebSocket negotiation request that returns a 101 message saying switching protocol. And in the WebSockets history tab in Burp, we can see some WebSockets messages. If we go to the lab and type a message, we can see more messages showing the communication in each direction. You can also use Burp proxy to intercept, view, and modify WebSockets messages on the fly in both directions. So if we turn on proxy interception and send a message, we can see our message appears in the intercept window for us to view and modify. So now I'm going to edit the contents of this message on the fly. And we'll see the message that I edited now appears in the user interface. Using the proxy to intercept and modify WebSockets messages in this way provides a basic way to test for vulnerabilities. You can configure in BERT proxy's options whether WebSockets messages in each direction are stalled for interception. You can also use BERT Repeater for more advanced tasks to test WebSockets messages. So you can select a message in the WebSockets history and choose Send to Repeater. You can now resend this message over and over, and you can edit it and continue sending it. As we're working in Repeater, the messages that are happening in both directions are shown here in the history panel. This shows the contents of the message, the direction in which it was sent, whether we sent it manually using Repeater or whether it was sent by the server or via the proxy through the browser. It shows the length of the message and the time. The WebSocket ID is a unique identifier in Burp that just references the WebSocket through which this was sent. As we select messages in the history view, the contents of the message is shown at the bottom. We can select a message and choose Edit and Resend. This sends that message back to the left-hand panel, which is where we can edit the message some more and resend it. We can also control the direction in which the message is sent. And if we have this box checked, which says Select Next Message Receives, this means that the message that comes back next in the other direction will be automatically selected and displayed in the bottom right. So this gives you a way to work a bit like the way you can with HTTP messages where we send a message out and then we view the message that comes back. If we go back to the browser, you can see that messages that we have been sending in repeater are appearing in the UI. And this is because we are injecting into the live WebSocket that the browser has connected with the server. If we type another message into the browser UI, we can see the resulting messages appearing in Burt Repeater. You can also control the WebSocket connection in which messages are sent. If we click on this pencil icon at the top of the Repeater UI, here we can see a list of all of the WebSockets that have been created in this session of Burp, which tool in Burp created them, and whether they're still open. You can select any open connection and click Attach to attach to that connection. This can be useful if you've become disconnected. You can use your browser in the normal way to re-establish a new WebSocket connection, and then you can attach into it directly from Repeater. You can also clone an open connection and create a new one that's just like it, or you can select any closed connection and click on Reconnect. In both cases, Burp lets you reconfigure the negotiation request 
that was used to create this WebSocket. So here we've got full edit access to the details of the request that will create the WebSocket. This capability is unique to Burp Suite and it's very powerful. There are often interesting bugs to be found by manipulating the request in the negotiation handshake before the WebSocket is opened. Have a play with some of the labs in the Web Security Academy for examples of this. You can disconnect or reconnect the socket that you're working on using this switch next to the pencil at the top of the UI. And you can create a brand new WebSocket tab and repeater by clicking on the three dots in the tab header selecting WebSocket, and then selecting the WebSocket that you want to attach to. So that's how to test WebSockets with Burp Suite and all of the different functions that can support your testing.